to, would I go back and do this all differently if I could do it again? Short answer in terms of being a nurse, probably should include that. That would be helpful. Short answer, I think I would do it different. And I don't know if I would be a nurse. This is going to be a panel discussion though, because I wanted to bring in a ton of different voices from people who may not uh, have the exact same sentiments. And I just want to start by saying, just because I wouldn't necessarily go back and do it again, doesn't mean that I, you can't find like fulfillment in this route or that you can't change your mind and go into something totally different. So I promise this won't be like a video where we're just like pooping on the nursing profession. It'll just be things that I just wish I like I had kind of known maybe what I would have done instead, but also what you're doing, what we're doing now. Um, and then obviously we're going to have some other people on. We have, as always, Scott, Nurse Scott, um, who is here right now. And then others might be popping in later. If not, everyone knows that Scott and I can talk very plentifully <laughs> and it's fine. We can just go with just the two of us. And we're just going to basically share mine, why I would do something differently and probably wouldn't choose nursing again. And I think Scott, well, Scott is going back and he is pursuing even more nursing things currently. So that's a different opinion. And I think we pulled everybody at the end of last week. And I think I was the only one who said, no, I was the only dissenter in the group. So Actually, Adrienne we, said she probably. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Adrian. Yes. And she might pop in um, later, believe it or not, people have lives, um, like actual lives. So they can't always come to our lives, but we would. So if you guys are watching on um, the live or the replay, just let us know in the comments, if you work in healthcare, if you work in nursing, would you do it again? And kind of why? And I think this is going to be a helpful thing for this is what I would have liked to have seen back when I was originally deciding was like a really honest conversation of like pros and cons. And this isn't like this is going to be right or wrong for you because it's going to be so different for everyone, right? I feel like I just wasn't, I didn't know myself well enough. And I had this magical world view of nursing where I was going to go in and I was going to fix everything. And that's just not the situation. So if you are, you know, it's going to all be personality dependent. So welcome. If you're new, I'm Liz. I'm a family nurse practitioner. I have a lot of opinions. And on this channel, we do commentary and healthcare education. And this is, I will let Scott introduce himself real quick. I'm Scott. I have the nurse Scott YouTube channel and, um, I have a lot of opinions too, and a lot of thoughts. And, um, this episode might actually be Nurse Liz pooping on everything and that I'll be wiping up. Yes, exactly. Sometimes we have we have a lot of good cop, bad cop here, especially like I'm usually the one who's like, the world is never going to be OK. And Scott comes in. He's like, actually, actually, I think it will be. And here's why. <laughs> so um, and then we also have Melody here. And Melody is another um, frequent flyer on our channel. And she is. Well, I'll let you introduce yourself. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Melody, and I have a master's in counseling, but was never able to practice due to disability. And on this channel, I kind of provide the voice of the patients. <laughs> Which is very helpful. Yes. So um, it's very helpful to have an outside influence other than someone who's in the middle of it in nursing. So that is Melody is here for that. And to just she brings joy to the channel. Um, so we have feelings in this box and then in scott's box we have rationality and melody's just like the one who's like it's like we're gonna have here's the giggle okay <laughs> so we have a good combination right now um and we'll get into it if we're watching on the replay i'll try to do timestamps. this one might be hard to do timestamps because it's more of just like a feelings one where we're, we're all just gonna kind of vomit up our feelings and see where we go uh and then looking forward just so everyone knows if you um are around on saturday melody and i are going to be doing a youtube live stream all about chronic care from the perspective of a patient things she wishes healthcare people knew um from that perspective. Um, and then maybe nurse Scott, me and you can do one at some point too, on a similar topic, if you're interested, because I know you have dealt with a lot of things from that end as well. Yeah. Uh, hello to everyone who is here in our chat. Um, so if we, I could add to that, Liz, it's yes. also things that I would like other, other patients to know. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and we went over it this morning and it looks like it's going to be a really awesome stream. So Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Hello, Miranda, Angelica, um, Angela, Moon Fairy, Mel. Hello, nurse student Carrie. I'm excited for today's discussion. Um, I agree. Uh, we're, I'd like to get your input, nurse, um, <laughs> nursing student Carrie, on what you feel like. You're just being in nursing school. Also, thank you for being a channel member. If you want to be a channel member, 
you can find that link down below. We have a lot of um, random extra videos and discussions, and we have one coming up on whatever the nurse was with uh, the car accident thing that we're going to be talking about in a members only live stream on Monday, I do believe. So if you're a member, stay tuned for that. Um, <laughs> who said Kate is giving Scott some crap <laughs> in the most loving way. Um, and she's ready for a chat about chronic care. So all good things. Okay, so would I go into it again? Uh, like I said, my answer would be no. And part of that reason is when I went into nursing, I did it because I was interested in healthcare. I thought it was, I was familiar with it. My mom was a nurse. My mom actually said, don't do this because <laughs> I think she knew me well enough and she knew what it was to be like, I am not sure that this is, I think she just knew me really well. I have the personality that I, I tend to latch onto things and I want to fix them, right? Because I get super passionate about whatever I'm into. It's a fun feature of my ADHD and I get into it and I get like into it. I'm going to learn how to crochet and I'm going to buy the whole everything for it. I'm going to garden. I'm going to go hardcore. And then I might forget about it and have like an entire quilting set up in my basement that I'll never touch again. But it was there for those five months that I was like, I'm obviously going to become a professional quilter. That is how I am in like every aspect of my life. So when I looked at healthcare, I was like, I like healthcare. I really like people. And I think this is, um, this is what I'm going to go into. I got into it. And I love a lot of aspects about it, right? I love patient education. I love, I feel like it's a huge privilege to get to meet people where they're at when they're at some of the crappiest parts of their life. And it's a really big privilege to be able to step in and be like, Hey, um, let me kind of hopefully make this as decent of an experience as possible. You know what I mean? Educate people because healthcare is such an important aspect of life. But on the flip side of that, I did not realize, which sounds dumb, how big of a deal healthcare is in people's lives. I never sat there and thought, oh, when I go to work, I'm literally interacting with people on their hardest days. Like I just was thinking like, oh, I'm just going to go to work and I'm going to do things. And the more I got into it, the more I was like, oh, like I'm really affecting people's lives in a really meaningful way, which is like is hard on the flip side because a lot like my husband, for example, he's always like, I wish that um, I did something. Sometimes he feels like his job isn't meaningful. You know what I mean? In real life. Um, but I felt like, oh, I wish mine was less because I have such a huge ability to touch so many people. And that's what ended up kind of leading me down the path of huge frustration with it for me was I was able to see a lot of problems in the healthcare industry that I couldn't fix. And remember, I like fixing and I have huge feelings. And so I see all these things. Um, you know, eventually I got into primary care as a nurse practitioner. I saw people who couldn't get any of the care that they needed because you know, they would save up their money to come to this one appointment because their deductible was $7,000. So this was the one they were going to get to go to. They wanted to cover everything. I'm like, we have 15 minutes. Like I can't solve this in that time period. And then I'm like, well, I think you should go and get physical therapy. They're like, I can't afford physical therapy. They can't afford therapy, therapy. People can't afford cardiologists. So they're guessing we're like looking through books and resources together. Like you can't afford to go to the cardiologist. So let's hodgepodge this together. And primary care, um, like nursing kind of opened my eyes to, oh, we need such better healthcare access in this country, which led me to being wanting to work in primary care. And then primary care kind of broke me, which if you follow along with this channel, you kind of know, like you've seen that transition. You've gone through the, I've been on YouTube the whole time I was a nurse practitioner as a primary care provider. And you kind of saw the, the okay, like the collapse of my, my brain. And so for me, it's not, it's something that I don't know if I would do again because I can't separate how much I'm passionate about it and I love it, but the system we're working in is not working. And that gives me so much existential dread that like, eh. so if you're a person who can look at it and be like, yes, there is a problem here and I'm going to do the best I possibly can to fix it, but I don't need to fix the whole thing. Like if your brain works like that, I think that can be really helpful. Um, and if you're guys are watching in the chat, like, let me know if you like how you deal with that. If you're someone who can like compartmentalize it and be like, I'm going to do the best I can, but I know I can't fix it. Um, I couldn't do that. And it took me, it's taken me like the last year to really get comfortable with that and realize I can make a bigger impact to doing hopefully other things, but I can't for my own mental health, go back into it and do it. 
And I think that's what my mom saw years ago. She was like, you're going to get in there and you're going to be like, I need to fix it. I can't take a step back and be one of those people who's like, yeah, it's really sad. I see it, but it doesn't like eat at my soul. I think she knew like this will eat at your soul and you're not going to be happy because you can't fix this. Like this is not very many things are outside of my, I can fix this control with enough YouTubing and research and sheer willpower and lack of sleep, but like healthcare might be that one thing. So for me, that's what it was. It was, oh, I want to be a nurse to take care of people. And when I was at the bedside, there was never enough time to do the stuff I imagined. You know, I imagined doing all the nice things. Like, I'm going to go in and I'm going to give everyone the best like bed baths to make sure everyone is so comfortable and everything is explained perfectly. And the reality of the job was just not quite lining up with it because I had not understood very well that nursing is a business. So I've also in the sense years, I think it's very valid to just say people change. You know, I didn't know when I was 20, whatever one, which is when I went to nursing school that I was going to like my framework of jobs. I just didn't know. Cause honestly, you don't even know what jobs are out there when you're like young and making choices like this. I think I like, if I could go back and do it all again, I would probably be like an instructional design slash graphic designer. Cause I love making educational content in the form of images. Like that's hence YouTube. So like, but I would have loved that. And I wouldn't have had my heart ripped out like <laughs> via my career. And that's probably would have like been fine. But again, I didn't know that until I had gone on this whole journey. So I don't regret it. And it's made me the person that I am. I'm a much more um, empathetic. I went in to nursing with a very like, I grew up in a very, very boring, stable, beautiful suburban bubble life um, that I like to call it. And I did not have any clue that uh, people, there was a lot of judgment surrounding like, oh, well, obviously if you're doing it this way, like then you're just, you know, it, like a toxic mindset, you know, like obviously um, like this is going to make me sound bad because I, I was a pretty crappy person in my brain. Like, oh, well, if you're, you know, poor, if you're this, like you probably did something, you know, that got you there, that landed you there. Oh, you're a drug addict. Well, that's probably because you made some really poor choices, having no concept of like mental health or like that not everyone also grew up in this beautiful bubble that I had grown up in. And I am forever grateful for nursing that it flew open those doors and introduced me to so many different people. And I am a completely different human 12 years later, sitting on the other end of it going, you know, like just completely, completely different. And that is because of my job as a nurse, because I've met so many people, because I've realized that like, my situation is not the norm, and that we should just be kind to people and love them where they're at and help them. And so I'm enormously grateful for the profession, but also it's not quite as glamorous and as problem solving as it was. It is a business. Nursing is at the bottom, at the end of the day, a business. And that is my soliloquy on that. Um, also, um, who said, Kate, thanks for the super chat. Um, she said to Scott, I did not purposely put that emoji. Um, Kate, I thought you were just throwing, um, like sarcastic shade. Uh, <laughs> so we know it's your intentions. <laughs> um, if I respond to that, um, so the nursing, when you guys go in there, like you were saying, it is your job and you're seeing us at our worst. Uh, for those of us who are chronically ill, it's our job too. And just like you, we have to compartmentalize. We have to accept less than perfect. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. have to be extremely frustrating. And we, for the most part, until a certain dynamic takes place, can't opt out. And that's a huge point of privilege from my end that I could be like, this breaks my heart and I leave. That's an excellent point, Melody, that like, you can't leave. You're just like stuck in it. And that sucks. No. <laughs> so yeah. Oof. Oof. James says, even growing up outside of that battle, the feel is frustrating. Yes. Um, who said, Kate said, I've had to compartmentalize when my shift is over. I shut it off so I can enjoy my real life. If I don't, the sadness and frustration with our healthcare system would make me ineffective as a mom and a partner. Exactly. And that's, and I super duper commend you for being able to do that because I 
for whatever reason, like I couldn't, and I'm still kind of beating myself up about that. If we're honest, like, I feel like I couldn't cut it. Like everyone else can compartmentalize. Why can't I compartmentalize? And maybe one day I'll be able to do it like a little bit better. Um, I tried to blame like pregnancy hormones. Um, but that ended and that's not coming back. So <laughs> and then I was like, well, I'm breastfeeding. So obviously that makes me more emotional. And then that stopped. And now I'm like, maybe I'm emotional. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like maybe I am just a, a big feelings human, um, which is, is frustrating. One of the survival skills. That, that yeah. I use. And I don't know where I can't, I don't know why I could do it, but I could go home after an eight or 12 hour shift and just do a memory dump. Yeah. And, not remember anything that happened that day going the next day not remember what happened the day before i didn't carry it with me now working in the er it's a little bit different because we have different patients not mm -hmm. only every day but sometimes every hour yeah uh, you're not going to see the same patient on the next shift uh, mm -hmm. that you did on the last um and either you're good at that or or you have to work on it um, yeah of course i have notes of course um, I, I think the difference that between liz and me is that she's it seems like more of a big picture person She's like mm -hmm. the healthcare system mm -hmm. and she's a cog in this wheel in, you know, a cog in this system and the system is broken. And my focus has always just been on my patient, like the person in front mm -hmm. of me. And that's that, in fact, a coping skill I have sometimes, cause I have a brain that kind of whirs and buzzes with thoughts too. And sometimes I'm like, God, you know, the country's in a mess and politics is so frustrating and and finally, I have to just like, okay, I'm looking at the world like this. I need to bring it in and just focus maybe on local issues mm -hmm. or maybe I need to focus what, on my living room and I need groceries or sometimes just focus on my breathing right in this moment because it's too overwhelming to, to especially when you don't have as much control over those things in the outer circles. Yeah. And that's that's Scott, those skill. are good tips for patients too. Mm -hmm. and yeah, brains. I think that's a life strategy is, is yeah. When things get too big, it just bring it back down to the moment. And that's why we talk about like deep breathing and, you know, mindfulness exercises mm -hmm. and things like that. And James says compartmentalization is a skill gainers is learning youth, which I'm sure is true. It's like almost like a trauma response. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'd be interested to hear more of what he means by that. But we do develop certain skills as growing up gay um, about presenting different faces to different people and keeping secrets and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I'd love to hear it's a trauma something. response. It really is. Well, growing up gay is not always traumatic. No, not traumatic, but like compartmentalizing like that. You know what I mean? Being like, I'm going to shove oh, this yeah, over here yeah. and I'm going to not yeah. think about it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I went into it. Um, I was a major. I was going to teach French in high school. I was a, I was in band and I, I learned French. That was my high school major, so to speak. So I got to college and I'm like, um, I really like French and I, I think I want to teach. And then I, at the time, kind of was thinking, I'm not, and I did it actually. I was a substitute teacher for a week. And it for was a okay. week? Yeah. There was a teacher out on maternity leave and she, they brought me in for a week to teach this one French class. And that was enough. And You're like, I, well, that was plenty. <laughs> the funny part was, you know, we have a quiz. We were out of time. We're going to do that quiz next time. And this girl in the front was like, you said we we're going to have the quiz today. And I was like, if you know it today, you'll know it tomorrow. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> honestly, it wasn't bad, but I didn't want to live in the closet for the rest of my life. And at the time in Missouri, uh, mm -hmm. that was a reasonable assumption. Um, and then my best friend was a nursing major. And I was like, God, Jenny, it's so great. You're going to be helping people. And mm -hmm. she always wanted to be a nurse. And I'm like, you're going to be right there with people. I mean, teachers help people and we all help people, but... Um, and I just, and I took a first aid class and I was like, I want to be the one that knows what to do in a crisis where everyone else is like, what do we do? What do we do? Call 911. I want to be like, step back. I know what to do. Yeah. I wanted to be that person. And I explored nursing. I shadowed a nurse and then, um, changed majors back at the time. All you had to do was change majors. There was no entrance exam. There was no waiting list. There was no application process. So, um, it was, it was very different for me. And my reasons, of course, everyone's reasons are different. Mm -hmm. You want to help people, you know, or you want to change the system or you had an experience because you were chronically ill as a child or your sibling was chronically ill as a child and you really, you mm -hmm. know, so it's a different story for everyone. Yeah, for sure. 
And that has to be a whole different, I saw someone's comment saying like, if you have both sides, like if you've been the patient and then you're kind of like you said, like then you're a chronic, then you have like so much, that's just a lot to handle. I um, was I was pretty healthy until like in my forties. And then I started being a patient more often and I really got to see things from the other side of the bed rail. Makes oh, you a better nurse, makes you a better nurse. Yeah. Um, and Kimberly Davis had said, I probably would have gone to business school or something like hospital administration because clearly they're making the real money here. Yeah. Um, we're glad you didn't go to, um, hospital administration school. Um, <laughs> I, I struggle in public when people are like, I'm a hospital admin. I'm like, <laughs> be kind, Liz, don't show it on your face. <laughs> they probably went into this with good intentions too. <laughs> they are not the enemy, but Oh, yes. Um, and then Michelle Garcia, um, my Orca said, I think I would choose nursing again, but I've only done outpatient care as an LVN. My opinion might change once I have my BSN and I end up at a hospital. But I think if you've worked outpatient too, I mean, you've seen a lot of that, like outpatient was what broke me. So, I mean, I think if you're doing that and you see it and you're able to look at, like Scott said, like the smaller picture versus the big picture, because that is my problem is I can't focus on the small individual picture. I only see like the whole thing. And then even if I helped one person, I'm like, but it's one person in this huge pot. Like that's just the way my brain works. And that's not very helpful. It really all. helps if you can see the, the small victories. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, For you know, sure. Because it's not going to be one of those, we saved a life today and mm -hmm. we were on the news and they're going to build a statue to me in the town square. Yep. Like it's a little old lady, you know, wants a hug and says, thank you, honey, you've been so sweet. Or a family says, you know, after you've helped them, view the body when a patient dies and says, thank mm -hmm. you so much, you've been very kind yeah. or something like that. That has to mean a lot to you or you, you, it's, it's just not going to work for you. Yeah. And Brittany McDonald, thanks for being a channel member, Brittany. So excited for this and had this convo with my fiance last night. Let us know what you decided. Um, let us know. I feel like I have been along with to nursing school and now nursing with Brittany because Brittany has been following my channel since she was in an accelerated nursing program. She's probably freaked out that I know that much about her. Um, but I feel like I've been following her whole journey and we'll send like messages back and forth. So tell us, Brittany, what are you feeling? Um, and James said, even as a student, seeing diabetics get amputations because they can't afford care, see diff running wild on units untreated because hospitals eat the cost. That's what patients getting their toes chopped off was what made me want to go back to be a FNP, which Scott, I know you're going back for your nurse practitioner. Do you have notes on that? Um, and what's making you go, like, why are you going back for more? One, because I'm disabled and my back won't let me wrestle with the psych patients and lift little old ladies in bed in the emergency room anymore. Although I tell you, I love it. I still love it. I'd be back there tomorrow if my body would let me. Um, and so I'm looking for something that gets me off disability because the money's not very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that monthly check from the government. And I know I have more to contribute and this will be less physical. Um, and I, I want to continue my education and, and take on my response. I know the, the cliche answer is I want to write orders instead of take orders, but I want to make the decisions. I feel like I've been doing it in the emergency room for a long time. You know, you examine the patient and before the doctor comes in and you're like, dude, you've got appendicitis. I mean, I'm no doctor, but you know, I said, well, yeah. you know, I've even said yeah. sometimes it's like, I can't diagnose you, but we'll see. And the doctor comes in and says, well, it looks like you've got appendicitis. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, as a nurse, you kind of have to do that when patients come in you're like what do i think i'm looking at you have a differential diagnosis in your head this patient comes in with abdominal pain and this and they've got this history and you're like well it could be this 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 or this so they're going to be a level mm -hmm. four or level mm -hmm. three so i just want to do it formally and get paid for it yeah that makes sense yeah. i totally get that um and to be clear if you could go back would you go back probably should have started yes. with this would you go back and do nursing again yeah it's 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 been frustrating. I've been fired from jobs. I was a crummy employee at times. Um, I was a good nurse, but a bad employee sometimes. And it's been up and down. And um, But the rewards, knowing I would rather do that than sit behind a desk or something. Oh, but mm -hmm. You have a direct impact on people's lives. And I have stories. Um, and I have little notes from patients, you know, a little attaboy notes mm -hmm. that they write. So, yeah. Those are the best. Yeah. Keep those, everyone. Keep your little notes. And go. And you learn how to save people. I'm in a I know. I and read I'm them. We could all cry together. Um, and now you know how to save people in the middle of a crisis. 
You know, and the funny thing is, you know, as a new nurse, I had a, a, a red toolbox in my trunk of my car and I was going to be like, you know, the superhero. So if anything, I could pull over in my car and, you know, help somebody do it. And it just, it doesn't come up. Or I thought, you know, I'll deliver a baby in an elevator or something yeah. like that. It, it hasn't just, happened? It, it just doesn't come up. The oh EM, I've lived in urban areas and EMS is right there. So people call 911, you get a paramedic. You don't really need some ambitious young RN with a red oh. box jumping in. And I'm so jealous. We need to tra trade places because I'm the person who's like, that's my nightmare. I'm like, okay, like, please just let there be like anyone, anyone else who's going to volunteer in these situations. And well, I would say like once- superheroes. I used to watch superheroes every Saturday. Yeah. I, super I wanted to be Superman, you know? And, right. and, you know, I would like ride my bike around town like, uh, oh, and I watched. I watched Who can Mash. I save? Right, and I watched Mash, and I watched Emergency with Johnny and Roy, the paramedics, Squad Fifty One. In fact, I still watch it on reruns, and I'm like, that's what I thought it would be. And it's not. Yeah. To agree with you, I was a little disillusioned. It's not like mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. all the time. You don't have a group of people in a Mash unit who are, you know, joking with each other and they're sharing in this shared, you know, adversity and all that. People stab each other in the back in the hospital and they're rude to mm -hmm. each other. It's petty mm -hmm. sometimes. And, and there's a lot of charting. I think I just misunderstood how oh. much of, see, I just spent all the time charting. Oh. Like on the floor, I, I I don't know if like assessments are different in the ER versus on the floor, but like yeah. I spent so much time charting as a nurse practitioner and as a nurse, I was like easily half of my shift was charting all of the different, all oh, of the things. Either. Yeah, not see, the And that's just like, I was like, what is You're this? Doing like, stuff. You're doing stuff. It's a focused exam. Click, click, click. Start the IV. Get the blood drawn. I got a new patient in the next room. Do the yeah. same thing with them. Hi, how are you? What's going on? I mean, you know, look, feel, touch, whatever. Click, click, click. All right, here's what we need to do for you. Go to the next room. Baby mm -hmm. with a fever. You know, that uh -huh. kind of thing. And we know it, Scott. We know it when we call report. And you're like, I'm like, can my patient walk? And they're like, they have two legs. <laughs> I think <laughs> or my favorite is, you know, they're being admitted for something like orthopedic and they're like, how do their lungs sound? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and, like, you didn't assess your and they would totally throw shame. You know, you didn't assess oh. your patient. And I had one nurse actually say, you know what, Scott, let me, call, let me, let me, um, I'll call, why don't you go do that? I'll call you back. And when, you call me back when you've done that. And I'm like, it's a focused exam. <laughs> Yeah, They're like lung, lung sounds. <laughs> and if you're watching and you're not in healthcare, ER and everyone else, we just, we throw shade at one another and it's a known thing. Um, <laughs> it's not malicious. Yeah, they, they, they think we're lazy and we think they're stupid and uh -huh. we're both wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but they think, you know, these nurses in the ER, they don't want to assess their patients. They don't want to get the IV started. They didn't put the Foley in. They're leaving that for us. And we're like, you're a floor nurse. You have no idea what the real world is like. No. You just like, push no. pills all day and wipe butts <laughs> and down here, like actually saving lives. We're up there sipping our coffee, like ever yeah, so yeah. slowly having our playing breakfast. Cards. <laughs> playing cards. <laughs> playing cards just casually. <laughs> yeah. Because the ER, the whole purpose is to just stabilize and then ship out. Um, and then... You the know, priorities everyone... are different. The, the job is different. It so, is. It's very yeah. different. And so I think that's also like, there's so many different jobs that you can explore. Um, and if you're not having an existential crisis, like I am, then there are a lot of different options. Do you want to have more of a turn and burn type of thing? Like the ER where you're not getting emotionally invested in people. Well, that's great. Cause you're here and then they're gone. You're going to be exposed to a whole bunch. Do you want something like an infusion person who's going to come and like see a chronic patient, um, and get to know people like Melody who are going to be in and out all the time. And you're going to build more of that relationship and see that. So there's a lot, a lot of different options, but there's a lot of charting. If you don't work in it, yeah, friends, there's there's a lot of charting. Until um, somebody dies, after they die, then there's paperwork. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Until they, please just don't, just make it upstairs, okay? <laughs> or or if nursing isn't quite it, you can explore, you know, alternative therapies and therapeutics mm -hmm. to help and enhance the quality of of life for those of us who who really need it. Mm -hmm. Do you want so to talk about like, oh, go for it. In the chat mentioned child, they discovered something called the child life specialist. Yes. And they were very interested in that. And it's like, you, like Melody, you said there's lots of other helping professions and some you don't even know about. Nope. How many of you even heard of a child life specialist or know what they do? 
you know, there's people that don't do, there's occupational therapists, speech therapists, occupational therapists, case managers, social workers, and then all of those have different practice areas and different, mm -hmm. like rural versus urban, or maybe they specialize in pediatrics. They have a whole pediatric system. Um, so if nursing, you're kind of on you're waffling on, um, first realize there are many ways to practice as mm -hmm. an artist. Out, you can be injecting Botox in a med spa, or you can be doing CPR in a trauma center, or delivering babies, or Riding around on your bike with a med kit. Yeah, exactly, with your little red toolbox. <laughs> <laughs> there are so I many still, options. I actually still have it. It actually has tools in it now that I'm older. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, and even, even within the specialized therapies, um, I'm more of a creative person, so like art therapy, dance therapy, those of you who've mm -hmm. heard me, music therapy is my passion. Um, even within those, there's like, you can be specializing with developmentally disabled, you can be specializing with dementia, you can have um, like hospice. I mean, even the specialties have specialties. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I think palliative care is probably, um, if I go back where I'll end up, because it's a lot more of a feelings like type of thing and there's a lot less like insurance. So I appreciate you bring that because there's, there are so many different places that people can end up and so many different specialties. Um, so just ask healthcare people, like what other jobs are out there? Because literally I knew of none. I was like, well, you're either a doctor or a nurse. Obviously those are the two options. Like <laughs> no one else is in a hospital. I, <laughs> I don't know what else happened. Cause I had no chronic health experience. Um, and so and I had no watch. idea. If you watch medical dramas, there are only doctors in hospitals. There aren't even any nurses. Yeah, the only people that were in scrubs yeah, were the doctors and the nurses. So <laughs> my music therapist came to see me in the hospital and she comes in and she goes, I'm the first music therapist to have been in the ICU in this town. <laughs> I was just busting up laughing. Way to be a trendsetter. I said, so get a you know, promote that a little bit and She's, she's kind of shy and she was like, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> she's like not trying to. <laughs> I love music as therapy. It's my therapy. I play all the time. I learned to play the flute over the pandemic. I was a saxophone yes. player already. All so right. that was a, not a huge leap, but I play, I just pick it up, play. It's great. Um, the one little story I have about music therapy is though, I was at a hospital. It was like the ICU. And at the end of the hallway, they had, I guess it was a music therapy program. They had a harpist. But I was like, oh. here are these people probably waking up from comas or, you know, critically ill. And they're like, have I died? Is this heaven? Oh, no. I, I, I hear the harps and the angels. I thought, you know, maybe a flute player would have been a better choice. <laughs> they're like, wait, what? <laughs> what is this? Oh, my gosh. And Scott, I was going to tell you with the with you riding around with your um, little uh, kit of safety, um, we need to trade lives because probably once a year I find myself in a situation where I am the healthcare provider for strangers and I hate it with my whole soul and I like wait way too long. Um, I tend to be in like, like my, I don't like supermarkets or gas stations. And people are like, oh my gosh, this person collapsed. And I'm like, oh no. Like I've been in gyms when people have just like fallen over. I'm like, this is. We're this living is each other's nightmare. lives. I know. <laughs> like, yeah. I wait so long. And I, then they're like. I want a cute little husband in a house and you got yeah. Yeah, They have that wife swap show. Exactly. Exactly. Like nurse exactly. Swap. <laughs> Exactly. Well, you do know, and for the nurses out there, I'm sure you already know, there is a good Samaritan law which says, unless you do something really stupid like stomp on a person instead of do CPR, you can't yeah. be sued for trying to help in, in a medical emergency. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say you're required. You don't have a duty to respond. So Liz in those you know gyms and, and grocery stores, you can uh -huh. keep shopping, keep working. You don't have to tell them you're a nurse if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Or you can show up really awkwardly like late when they're like, did you forget that you do this? <laughs> like, How many nurses? Just... Here's a question. I was compartmentalizing. <laughs> yes, I was compartmentalizing. I can't be the only one that wanted to save the world as a new nurse. I want to know how many nurses in the chat, when they get on an airplane as a new nurse, told the flight attendant they were a nurse in case there's a medical emergency. You told the flight. You told them you were a nurse. Just in case, let you I know. I'm, I'm in 14 C. If there's a medical emergency, I'm an emergency. I have my kit. I you know how much I would love that if I were on the flight, if you just got on the uh, on the loudspeaker and announced that in case any of you are chronically ill on this flight and you did anything, I'm in seat 5A. I would be like, yes, thank you. 
I don't even admit to people on airplanes what I do. They're like, what do you do? I'm like, I, I work in the healthcare sphere. <laughs> They're like, oh, care to elaborate? And I'm like, no. I find people do, do respect. I mean, I don't hide. I mean, people like, so what do you, you know, what we talk, what do you do? I'm a mm -hmm. nurse. Oh, they always raise their eyebrows. Oh, that's great. So there still is a lot of respect for the profession. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's like, but you're you know, I didn't tell them, well, I inject Botox at a med spa. I'm not exactly yeah. surprised. <laughs> oh, you're a nurse, you know. Of course, then you tell them you're an emergency nurse. Oh, you must see some shit. You're like, yes. Yeah, that's, yes. Yeah, and I love it. That's <laughs> what we do. I mean, I was going to say this earlier, too, about choosing nursing. It has to be a fit with your personality, first of all, mm -hmm. and the area you go into. And it also has to be a fit with kind of your life philosophy. And mm -hmm. um, I am an out and proud atheist. I believe this is the life we're given. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that we necessarily have anything after this. So if you want to do something, now is the time to do it. So, and I want to experience life. I don't want to live in a bubble. I had fraternity brothers. I was in a music fraternity. A lot of them went on to be band directors and choir directors, which is fantastic. But they're not going to see the car accident victim or the guy who stroked or the woman who miscarries because they're teaching band, which is great. I wanted to be aware of all this stuff happening. And so being in the ER, I, I'm seeing drama, the real life drama that really happens. Um, I'm one of those people that wants to experience that. If you're one of these people, it's like, I know it happens, but I don't want to think about it. Mm -hmm. Then nursing may not be for you or certainly the ER may not be for you because it mm -hmm. all, it all hits the fan there. But I, like I said, I wanted to be the one that knew how to handle that and be a part of the solution. And, it's I've chosen to, to focus on the person in front of me, the family in front of me and not get too bogged down in the system. And so someone else in the chat was talking about, you know, I get so frustrated by the system, and this and that. It's, it's up to you whether or not you want to take that on. Now, Liz seems to not be able to help it and just sees the big picture. But it may be that you have some choice and, you know, how much of that you want to take on. I don't care about the politics. I don't care mm -hmm. about who you know, funding or whatever, magnet status or any of this. I, I want my four rooms and my four patients and a doctor, and we're going to do some good today. Yeah. And we need people like you. And I'm glad you exist very much because yeah, the healthcare system would be. Would, yes. Well, thanks. <laughs> um, and Angela Davis had said, I don't think I read this one before. I would absolutely like, would you go back into nursing? Just kind of reading your comments as they come in. I would absolutely go back into nursing. I started in 2002 and it was so different then. I will no longer work a bedside and glad nursing has different options in job security. Yeah. There's a ton of different jobs. Obviously now I'm working for like an online education company in Germany with my nursing license. So that's weird and fun and cool. <laughs> Like the plot twist, no one expected. And there's so many, so, so, so many different avenues like that. Um, I, oh, we read Michelle's I'm trying to see, I'm trying to stay caught up with the chat today, friends. I'm really trying. I'm really bad at it. I get very sidetracked with our conversations. Um, I saw another music lover in there. <laughs> yes. Um, and I think this is a really good point that Angelica brought up. I'm glad I waited until I was 27 to start nursing school. I have a much clearer vision of what's ahead and I'm okay with it for now. And I think that's a huge, just like you were saying, Scott was like a mindset thing. Like I am able to much more clearly know who I am, even with those extra couple of years, like I know who I am. I know what I want to do. I understand that this is probably not all going to be like roses and butterflies and that's okay. I'm going to choose it anyway, versus I very much chose it in my roses and butterflies. The world is like obviously exactly how my experience has been like of course it'll work out vision not, of. In, for for an er nurse with a mindset like me it's not roses and butterflies it's it's strokes and heart attacks you just you expect your world to be full of strokes and heart attacks and when you get these people in with you know a splinter in their finger or some nonsense you know kind of minor thing you're like is this what I signed up for? It's an emergency room and you're here for like primary care, ran out of pills or you're drug seeking or, you know, someone stepped on your foot or the baby spit up and you're like, I actually had a dad say that. Um, there's something like it's clear fluid coming out of the baby's mouth. I'm like, you're first time dad. That's drool and it's normal. <laughs> and I'm like, where are, I'm supposed to be saving lives. Where are my strokes and heart attacks? And um, world is yes. not what you think it's going to be butterflies and rainbows or strokes and heart attacks. Yep. Um, we had all the time. So I worked in a peds hospital. 
I cannot tell you. I mean, every night, multiple babies were in the emergency room for fussiness. And like, you would see it. And it's like, you're reading through, like, seeing because you're like, oh, maybe it's like a kid that we're going to end up getting. And it's like, oh, like the baby's been crying for like 30 minutes. The parents got worried. So they brought them in. And I'm like, oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Poor people. And they wonder why they have to wait. Mm -hmm. And Roderick is um, this was kind of, this was the one I saw earlier. We should now also acknowledge that there are nurses who are chronically ill as well. So they may have two points of view on compartmentalization where you're like compartmentalizing, like you said, Melody, your healthcare, which I'm glad you brought up. Cause I honestly never like gave, I realized like, you know, that, oh, people can't get out of it, but like you like can't walk away from it. So you're like double can't walk away from it if you work in it too. And that is hard. Mm. I don't have a solution for that. Therapy, meditation. Music therapy, all of those things. Um, and it, Natalie said that um, kind of in the same vein, I think there's a difference between people who go into nursing straight out of high school versus those of us who pursue it as a second career. I was a social worker and was looking for something hands-on. Yes, yeah, so you, and you have a much better idea of what is actually happening here. So the expectation is more with your reality versus my expectation was, you know, oh, obviously I'll go in there and fix everything. Everyone else is just dumb. They haven't figured it out. <laughs> watch me fix it. And I was like, no, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Bummer. Um, Chris is a currently in his last semester of his BSN program and works as a nurse tech nurse intern currently. And I get gratitude out of getting thank yous from patients in need. Yes, that is huge. Like I said, keep those. Those are the best. Mel um, always had an underlying interest in healthcare and was headed to med school when I got very ill, but being part-time, being a full-time patient for years is a huge part of why I'm heading to nursing school at 42. And so that's another like eyes wide open. You very much understand what you're getting yourself into. Uh, and I think your future patients are lucky because you're going to have awesome perspective um, on what it's like to be on the other side of it. Um, yeah. Some of the younger people in my cohort don't know what they're getting into. Yeah. Fair. Oh, and did an update any from. Us, did any yeah. of us really? No, no, not at all. Um, Brittany McDonald, this is our update from earlier. I would 100% go to business school. I work in the NICU now, which is so much better than my old job. And I love babies, but the issues with the system weigh on me more than I expected. Okay, good. So, someone else with big feelings who can't compartmentalize very well. Bring it down. Mission. Yes. <laughs> it's probably something we should go to therapy about, Brittany. I think we probably should bring that up somewhere. Michelle Garcia, I only chose nursing out of high school because my family is in healthcare and I needed a job. I got so lucky that I fell in love with this career. Otherwise I'd be miserable. It's definitely not for everyone. And um, here's our normal disclaimer that it's fine to change your mind. Okay. I feel like people get a lot of flack, especially nurses when you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. And it's more of a moral failing. It's similar with teachers. You know what I mean? I feel like when nurses and teachers say, I don't want to do this anymore. This is a lot. People look at you and they're like, the world needs you. Whereas if you are working in like tech, like, I don't think if my husband quit, they'd be like, you don't want to be a software engineer anymore. Like you want to go into finance. Like, I think like no one's mind would explode. They'd be like, Oh, that's okay. You got interested in this. And then you moved over here. But when we quit, they're like, Oh, you couldn't cut it. It's like, oh my gosh, like, what is this attitude coming from? And it's fine to change your mind. Um, it is so fine to change your mind. I've been lucky being single, no kids, that I could explore my interests. And I went back as soon as I graduated nursing school to take some sign language classes. I thought it would be fun. And it turns out I was good at it. And they said, you're going to be a very good interpreter. And I said, oh, well, I'm not studying to be an interpreter. I'm already what I'm going to be when I grow up. And they're like, you should really think about it. And so I ended up finishing the, the program and than taking a job as a sign language interpreter. Although that person's job is to convey the message from one person to another without being involved in the conversation. And like, I have too many ideas and opinions. <laughs> and it was difficult at times, but um, I, I, I loved it. And so I went back to nursing and then studied psychology because I work triage at Cedar sinai and the people in the waiting room are like, why are they acting the way they're acting? I have to have like, I have to make sense of this. And I went back and studied psychology. I don't understand everything. I don't have all the answers. I have some better questions. And I thought, well, I'll do clinical psychology. I'll be a therapist because that's part of my job counseling. You know, I did a year of that, the MFT program, and thought I am not the person to share your feelings with and sit with them. I need to fix you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I used to think that that was kind of a, a male thing 
men fix things. You know, you tell your husband, you know, the sink, you know, is leaking instead of going, wow, what a, you know, what an inconvenience. He's like, I'll fix it. You know, we're here yeah. to fix it. We have our red toolbox, right? But apparently it's not only us because Liz wants to fix things too. Yeah. I Imagine have a that. Emergency. A woman. You have a red toolbox. I have a red toolbox. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we want to fix things and sitting there with a, with a client in therapy was not, my calling it was not, I wasn't the person to do that. So I went back to nursing again. So, but I could have easily stayed in any of those. And if, you know, and, and if anyone judges you for leaving nursing, it's, it's probably because they have big feelings. Your themselves. life is none of their business and their opinion yeah. is none of your business. So, and they probably also want to leave, but can't and um, feel jealous <laughs> that you feel trapped. Just saying, just, just, it's okay to change your mind. It is okay to change your mind. Um, speaking of people who change their mind, um, Sam, Sam would be a pharmacist. They changed their mind the least in the um, live that we did last Tuesday talking about uh, there's not really a nursing shortage. We're just short on treating nurses like humans. Um, pharmacists had the least turnover of any healthcare specialty. They stay. So there's that. You could go be a pharmacist. That sounds really boring to me, but you do you friend. <laughs> but again, there are areas in pharmacy you don't know about. You That's think very true. Walgreens putting pills in bottles. And that I think of the Walgreens problem. people calling and yelling at me and being like, Liz. But like we've had, ER, we've had a, a dedicated <laughs> pharmacist for the ER and that person is running around making sure they reconcile everybody's medications. When we have a code, they're there when we give TPA, mm -hmm. they're there to educate us on something if we have a question or, you know, so there are more exciting aspects, even aspects of it. Yeah. See, to me, pharmacy is they're either calling me to bother me or I'm calling them to bother them and be like, um, I don't see the medicine. I promise. I don't see it. <laughs> I find searched? that when um, the doctors don't return my calls or their offices don't, a lot of times the pharmacists can answer my questions. The pharmacists, I did not fully utilize pharmacists until I was <laughs> a nurse practitioner and they know so much. There was I one tell that, patients all the time. If you yeah. have questions, because I'm going to go over this with you briefly in the ER, and you're going to forget it. You're going to get your mm -hmm. prescription filled, but ask them, especially if it's like an inhaler or an injectable or something. I said mm -hmm. they fill pill bottles back in the back all day. They are looking for excuses mm -hmm. to come out and talk to yep. people, and, and or ask them for recommendations and over-the-counter yeah. medicine for your I hemorrhoid. You like? They'll be like, let, let me show you. Come down the aisle. I'm so glad yeah. to get away. Or like you can models. ask them what med, how you could combine your meds in a schedule that works better. All the time I would call mine and I'd be like, this is what I'm dealing with. And I don't know how to make this functional for this person. And they know that's what they know is how do meds interact with each other. And they would help you like These make a thing, be like, hey, let's take it like this. Or, hey, you might actually want to switch this med for this med. So that's more of like if you're a healthcare provider. But they did that all the time where I'm like, I need... Uh, you know, an SSRI that's going to kind of play well with these others that we have going on and they could tell you. So these people have this. doctoral degrees in drugs. Yeah. All of resources. my, all of my smartest friends in high school went on to be pharmacists and um, they're out there like living their best life. They go on a lot of vacations. So <laughs> there's something to be said. <laughs> for pharmacists. Um, and yeah, Mel said, child life specialists are awesome. I've often thought with adults with long-term serious benefits could benefit from something similar. Yeah. I don't, I mean, it's all about money. Uh, everyone will pay for the kids to have child life specialists, but yeah, why don't adults have something like that? It doesn't make sense. Um, child life, if you're not familiar, they come in and they do like a bunch of therapies with kids that are in the hospital or they'll make scary situations less scary. So, oh, you have to have an IV put in, you have to have this, they'll come in and they have all sorts of, um, techniques and strategies to work with them to make things less scary. And they work with kids when you've been on the floor a long time, they'll have crap. Like they just do different therapeutic things for the families of the kids and the kids that are on the unit. Well, and, and is it what Mel is suggesting regarding having that for adults, adults. have a functioning palliative care uh, program? Is that similar to what she's asking? I think it's more inpatient. I've seen, um, at least I've seen child life inpatient and for adults, all they like, there's no people coming around and offering crafts or like, Hey, if you're able to get out of bed and you can get down to the common room, we're going to be playing this game. Like that's what they do with the kids or they come by and you get like a bead, um, on, you would have a necklace at our hospital. And every time you had a procedure or an IV poke or a, 
anything that could happen to you, you all of a sudden you weren't NPO or you were NPO to kind of make it like a game. You collected a necklace and then everyone would like show it off like their bling. And you were like, whoa, Aww. like to the kids who had like the necklace that was like loaded, like even something like that, like could be I think, a volunteer bring in pets. That was very see, helpful to me. Yeah. Like something like that, like a group coloring anything, I feel like for adults, cause you're just there and you don't like do anything. Um, do either of you have any advice for people if you're considering nursing and you aren't sure that you wish you would have told your past self going back, I will give you a moment to think about it. Um, mine would just be ask more people who are doing it, what it's really like, you know, cause I didn't, I was just like, Oh, obviously the television is telling me the truth and, um, this is fine. I wish I would have just asked around and said, <laughs> Hey, do like, what is your day to day like? What do you, what are you really doing? Um, and just get a better handle on it, you know, talking to other people and seeing. Are you allowed um, to shadow without actually enrolling in a program? You can try. Um, Richard King said this too. I would have shadowed a nurse. If you can shadow, that's awesome. It's getting harder and harder to shadow because of HIPAA and now hospitals are like, a lot of hospitals in some states, you just like can't at all. Um, a lot of hospitals are really, really locking it down. But if you can, I mean, that's ideal. You just have to know someone usually. Or you can contact, the other way to do it is to contact a nursing school um, or the hospital directly, but that could be hard. You can contact a nursing school and say you're interested in becoming a nurse. Is there someone they could like a clinical staff that you could follow um, to go and shadow? Because so, we had some people that, got hooked up that way. And then like, sometimes your school like connects with people um, and you can shadow that way. You can shadow. I found that really useful. I did that yeah. a long time ago. I called the hospital. I said, Hey, my best friend's a nursing major and I'm thinking about it. Is there any way I could shadow a nurse? And they, they set me up with an ICU you nurse like for an hour and a step down nurse for an hour. And, you know, they just kind of let me see. And, and that way you get a feel for the atmosphere. There's just something about being like in the ICU, there's smells and the, the energy level and how the nurses interact with the patients. <clears throat> and the same on the step down unit. I remember the guy, he's a male nurse who, who had me there, um, who took the time to say, you know, I know that there's like a stereotype that all male nurses are gay, but you know, in my experience, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so like, good to know, good to know, thanks. Thanks. You know what's interesting is from the from the patient perspective of this too. Um, if if you have a need and you know you're going to have to have a procedure and it's not an emergency, it's really too bad that we can't really go in and see the environment that we will. Yeah. Be if we're going to do that, or to, or to the care facility to which we're going to be transferred afterwards mm -hmm. for care. Yep. And the biggest problem that I've had was seeking um, psychiatric treatment. Mm -hmm. And there's such a wide variety in terms of the quality of care, the environment there that I'm like, I'm not checking myself in this place without being able to look at it first. And they're like, yeah. sorry, you can't. Yeah, you know, and, because, and I understand confidentiality reasons, whatever. Take my phone away from me. Make sure I don't have a camera on me. Do whatever. Just, I mean, I... I agree. I, no. And, <laughs> and I don't know why we don't either. Like, cause you do that when you go to have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. Most places when you're halfway through your pregnancy or like in your third trimester, you go and you visit the labor and delivery place. They walk you through it. They say, this is what a birthing room is going to look like. And then we're going to wheel you down the hallway this way. And this is where you're going to go after you have the baby. And then this mm -hmm. is the NICU just in case you need to know where it is. This is where you should park. This is where your partner can go eat. You know what I mean? Like this is, they lay it out for you. And we did that in peds too. Um, you know why? Oh, you know yeah. why they have the best wallpaper in the OB yes. department? <laughs> which that's is, where they make their money. Which is stupid that's because they're that's they're the not good. what you're thinking about is wallpaper. Like <laughs> well, <laughs> well you are when you're a psychic. Not in labor. I not in, no, I mean in labor. I was like, no, what if you have good. all yeah. the rooms in here painted brown? We're all depressed mm -hmm. people. Paint yeah. it green or pink or something. It's mm -hmm. not that hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did that in peds too. The thing with LP is you know you can shop around for where you want to have your baby. You've got nine months. That's very true. So when That's you go and you tour the place, it has nice wallpaper and they say, oh, by the way, we've got, you know, shrimp dinner, steak dinner after you, uh -huh. you know, whatever. Like, it's mm -hmm. true. 
They did. Yeah. They mentioned the menu on the thing. They were like, the <laughs> menu is great. Because that's like, where the money comes in a hospital. It goes out the ER, but it comes in through OB. Yeah. And we did that in peds though, too. Um, it was, I thought it was really nice. They took, cause we were a cardiac unit, um, who did like surgeries on babies and kids. And so they would bring the parents in beforehand and they would see where you're going to get all your ultrasounds. Um, where, what do the rooms look like? What, you know, here, let's take you kind of to the OR. This is where, you know, our cath lab is, this is, and they did, they toured the whole unit. You got to meet some of the nurses. Um, they introduced you to child life. They said, these are all the things that we're going to have. Um, they showed you the ICU, like this is where your kid is going to kind of go first. And then they'll go to this like other moderate kid, like all of these things. And it was so nice to like have them kind of know, cause it is so scary. And I don't know why we don't do that more. Um, surgery studio said, that's actually what I'm working on right now, teaching patients and their families and preparing them in advance for surgeries and getting simulations and actual medical equipment. I love that. See, that's what we need. That's what I've we seen need them do of. that with kids. They'll bring the kids in and they'll let mm -hmm. them you know, like sit on the CT machine and then, you know, look at the operating room and see what everyone looks like with the masks because that can be kind of scary, you know, in full mm -hmm. OR gear. I do that with everything. I think it's helpful to always know. This is what a speculum looks like, okay? When you come back for your pap smear, this is what this looks like. Oh, we're going to do a skin biopsy in another week. Here's the whole punch, okay? Just if you want to see it. <laughs> I saw something recently where they said, you know, it's okay if a woman doesn't want to have her pap smear. It's completely up to her. There's a million reasons why she wouldn't want one this visit. Um, and one of the things they said, you know, if they're unsure about things, you can give them a speculum to take home. They can play That's with what it. That's I do. I do. I send them home and a little packet of lube. I'm like, all right, well, you go figure that out and um, I'll see you in a week. <laughs> Didn't expect they would put it in, but they could at least, you know, like, okay, it's not a foreign object. It's something oh, yeah. I've looked No, I don't. Out. No, they put it in. They, I don't want it back. That's what I do with all my young girls. I send them home with one like a year in advance. I'm like, I'm just going to send you home with this. This is what we're going to be looking at in a year when I see you again. You go figure that out and uh... go see where that fits and get back. Uh -huh. yep. <laughs> tips. I'm going to write, okay, tips for, because, you know. Yep. Because they don't be know. And I bring it up. Yes, I bring it up a year or two in advance. So now it's 25. Now it's not even 21. And I just say, hey, just like, so you know, next year, just like the colonoscopy and the mammogram talk, where you're like, hey, just so you know, next year, I will be adding a fun new thing to our preventative health care plate. Okay. <laughs> Have you heard of Go Lightly? <laughs> yeah, you will. Okay. <laughs> That's fun. I had that. <laughs> Here we go. So to answer Let's your see question, where this fits. Yeah. <laughs> That's a dangerous <laughs> statement. I would not encourage that statement. Yeah. <laughs> you might get an interesting phone call. <laughs> I'm thinking about yeah, or I might get an interesting patient in the ER. Uh huh. <laughs> Why do you have a spec? Wait, how did you? Who told how did you? you what? Did that? <laughs> um, I'm thinking about your question though, like advice to your younger younger nursing self. One. Um, my issue, what I would have told myself relates to the problems that I had later on. And that would have been, it is important to get along with the people that you work with. It's, you can't just go in and say, look, I just work here. I'm not here to make friends. You have to make friends. You have to learn to play well with the other kids in the sandbox. Um, I would have focused a little bit more on that and maybe taking more math. You know, it's always a good idea in case you want to move up in, in psychology or nursing or anything. You get up high enough, you're going to have to do more math. Um, I don't like that answer. The math what? part. The math Just part? the math part. Yeah. <laughs> but well, that is good advice. I mean, you do I have mean, to know. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm telling my nieces and nephews now, like in high school, middle school, just take the math now because they're not going to know the difference. It's just hard to take calculus as, you know, I mean, they're just doing all this school stuff anyway um, because you don't know what you're going to be interested in later and how far up the ladder you're going to go. Yeah. And you want a PhD in who, social work even. You know, yeah. you have to do research and statistics and all that kind of stuff. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it wasn't it spirit. wasn't bad advice. I just didn't like it. Yeah. Like, I, I would not want to take more math. <laughs> Mama what? Nurse is here. Hello, Hi, Vanessa. Guys. Hi. Welcome. You look thank like you, you just got you. done with all of your day. Just about. How did it go? <laughs> it feels like. Um, it's been good. Knock on wood. I'm not going to complain about today. I've been off for a week. So it's day one of three. So. And you went back. And I you went back. back. That's the hardest part where you're like, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I do need a job. I do need a job. <laughs> I have some bills to pay. <laughs> <laughs> we must return. Do you want to tell us really quick 
if you would be yeah. a nurse again, because I know, I don't know if you have to run again or, but we'll just tickle your brain. Vanessa, you can introduce yourself real quick. All Everyone's YouTube social medias would be linked down below. I think I forgot to say that earlier. So you can check all, all of these lovely humans um, in longer increments, but yes. <laughs> All right. So I'm Vanessa. I'm a trauma surgical ICU nurse, a mother of four, and I've been a nurse for, I think this month makes nine years, if not eight years, one of the two. Um, and I would become a nurse again. I actually really love being a nurse. Um, I tell my patients all the time that if I had the chance to go back, I would do it all over again. And yeah, that's pretty much it. What do you love about it? Currently, I love the freedom and autonomy of travel nursing. Can't beat oh, that. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I like the three twelves. I it works well with our homeschool schedule, so that's another plus for me. I do love the fact that I've always been a very shy person. I love the fact that I can advocate for my patients um, and be able to communicate with my patients and their family members, and then the personal growth that I've seen in myself. Mm -hmm. You know, you really get to learn a lot. The education is endless. Um, and you really surprise yourself when you step out there and learn new things. Yeah. When you go and you save people and yep. do, Scott yeah. was talking earlier, he likes to be the saving person who like can run around with like a, a thing and be like in public, I will save you. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but it worked I, too. It's very satisfying. I still can't believe nobody in the chat said, yeah, when I was a new nurse, I used to tell the flight attendant I was a nurse when I got on the plane. I can't believe nobody else did that. Like, See, in case I, don't, I don't fly often, yeah. so. But would you tell the flight attendant that you are a... I I don't think so. <laughs> I, I don't, now, if there was... I don't tell them now, but if, um, if something came up, I would help. But no, I don't go on the plane. Right. Like, just so you know, you got a medical professional on board, so don't sweat it. Send them my way. That's my new 25-year-old yeah. <laughs> new nurse self that did stuff like that. And mom and nurse, I, and I have a question. We were talking about how sometimes, you know, the patient, I think we all love patient interaction mm -hmm. and family interaction. It sounds like you certainly do. But then there's the administrative stuff and the politics of the workplace and, you know, um, you know, union contracts and the whole collapse of the healthcare system and all that. How do you not let that all ruin the whole experience of being a nurse for you? That's honestly a good one because I don't like the politics side of it. Um, it's sometimes hard, especially when patients are venting to you in regards to the politics and things like that. So that part is definitely hard. I think I try to block it out if I'm being honest and just focus on that patient side of it and the nursing side of it rather than let that weigh down on me um, mm -hmm. and affect the care that I give. And that's a lot like what Scott, you were saying of mm -hmm. let's focus on what I can do right in front of me and do it really well. Yeah. And change that person's one. day. Nursing is life. I said this in another chat. Nursing is life. You know, it's going to be choices and conflict and learning and learning and learning and death and birth and disability and family struggle. I mean, it's all the life and it's all in nursing too. And one of the thing in, things in nursing, oh my God, did I lose my train of thought? Though another thing in nursing is. Would You've you been around me too long. <laughs> oh, oh my yeah. God. I'm rubbing off on you. Party on live stream. <laughs> Um, I'll think of it in a minute, but, um, oh, so the things that work, well, and the, the things that work in life, like I said, one of my techniques when I get overwhelmed is just kind of shrink my, my focus. Right. And, and another one is I've learned everything in life falls into two categories, things that are my problem and things that are not my problem. In other words, things I have control over and things I don't. And so much of life is category two that we worry about and get bogged down with and, and and in nursing as well you know the contract negotiations are going badly or you know we don't have enough nurses or they didn't get the new equipment or whatever the issues are if you can't do anything about it it's best to just go okay look let me work within the system that i'm in and some of that challenge i kind of enjoyed you know it's like let's see it's if I, to do more with less but then again i grew up watching mash so mm -hmm. you know <laughs> when they What's ran that? out Bean pills, they had to scrape the sugar off the um, donuts and give them sugar pills as placebos. They did what they could, you know. So some of that, if you enjoy that kind of a challenge. From a patient's standpoint, you know, we have that too, or 
hearing, you know, there's the drug shortage, the doctor shortage, or your diagnosis and your stage four stage, you know, whatever. And, um, and people don't want to talk about worst case scenario, you know, and I personally am the opposite. I would rather be like, okay, what is the worst case scenario? And then come up with like, if that happens, what is the plan? And then I can just sort of set it aside and then just do the best I can with what I have and hope that I don't have to do that instead of just continuously wondering about the unknown. Because I'm always having doctors be like, I don't want to scare you about this. And I'm like, scare that me. statement scares me, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm the one who has to live with it. So mm -hmm. we need to have this conversation so yeah. we can figure out what to do other than go to an ER who's going to say, well, you really should talk to your specialist about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so. I like asking people, I'm like, do you want the best case scenario or the worst case scenario? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I want both. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of human are you? I'm like <laughs> worst, a thousand percent worst. I feel like if yeah, I could I be, both. I want to hope for the best and prepare for the worst, you know? Yeah. I feel like you're just constantly walking around wondering if the worst is going to hit you and, and what would that look like? And what the heck should you do? And is there anything you can do so that that worst isn't quite as horrendous as it has to be or could be? That's and a very good mindset. The I think patients deserve mm -hmm. the information. Mm -hmm. I do too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the trauma side, we, I definitely educate on the worst scenarios quite a bit. Um, especially with family members, because a lot of times we do see the worst of the worst. So when you inform them, if things start going left, they're more understanding and more aware of, okay, this was a possibility. So let's maneuver and manage it now. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. there's what, the going left and then there's the shock of everything going left. And if you could decrease the shock, right. you know, by anticipating, you know, just people can kind of prepare. It won't keep it from happening. Help. Shock won't be. It's like, well, right. mm -hmm. it's not the first time I've heard this. They told me this could happen. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's good. Uh, Mom and nurse, what do you do with with patients like such as myself who don't like have families or really anyone else around to advocate for them? So you're, we have to take it all on ourselves, but we obviously need the information. Do you have any any tips for other providers on how to how to handle that instead of just saying, good luck, call me if you need me. <laughs> right. I try to really enforce or advocate for friendships, you know, even if it's not immediate family. And I'm also very willing to talk to my patients myself and be that comfort, you know, while they are in under my care. Um, mm -hmm. But definitely just because you're not blood related doesn't mean that that family member or friend could be an advocate for you and help you through whatever you're going through. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. For sure. Um, Vanessa, do you have anything that you wish you would, like, if people are sitting here and they're like, I don't know if I should do this or not, like, what would you consider or tell that person if they're considering going into nursing, but they're just not sure? I would say do it. Um, my biggest tip, I started out as a CNA. Um, and I feel like that really helped me um, to get comfortable with talking to patients and family members mm -hmm. and just kind of breaking that ice. It was a really good role for me to start out in. Um, and I think that helped build my nursing base. So I would say go for it. And then if you go through with it and you actually don't like it after you've tried different specialties or different settings, then switch. Find something else. It's OK. Yes. See, she there says it's OK, much. too. <laughs> I, remember, I remember when I was a, a new nursing major and everybody had a dollar's worth of free advice and people saying you should go and be an L LPN so that you can get it, paid, you know, and then make some LPN money to get you through nursing school. And other people were like, don't get the assessment or get the bachelor's right away, which I think probably was good advice. I think I would have, you know, I loved college so much anyway, why I didn't stay an extra year or two to get the BSN instead of the ADN. I don't know, but, um, you just have to do what's right for you. You want to jump right in, right out of high school, get into a BSN program and dive into the deep end. Great. Try to work in a hospital while you're doing it so you get a feel for the stuff they don't teach you in class. If you want to kind of dip your toe in the water and do a CNA work for a while and that works for you financially and maybe then go to LVN and then ADN, you know, go slow. Fine. But it's okay to jump in. It's okay to stick your toe in the water. Absolutely. 
Izzy Stevens says, yay, Mama Nurser's presence is amazing. Absolutely love her. Yes, she's Aww, she's an thanks, excellent, guys. wonderful addition <laughs> to our panel. And again, you can find all of her videos, all of Scott's videos and all of Melody's videos in mm -hmm. the description below um, where they you can just hear them without me interrupting them. <laughs> Continuously no, just love it. put their we videos on and have them go. Um, we had, Miriam had a question. She said, what advice would you give to a student nurse who's listening to this and thinking, how can I become an activist for improving the bigger picture side of things? Where is nurse Adrian when you need her? I know. Um, <laughs> I'd like to phone a friend. Um, <laughs> her name is Adrian. Getting involved. In a class. Yeah. 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 Getting the involved with like can... your local things. Yeah. Definitely. At most hospitals, they have um, a shared governance, and that really can help advocate for different things that are going on in the hospital setting and with patients at the bedside and nursing and all of that. So once you do become a nurse, that could be a good um, role to step into. There's nursing unions if you're unionized or if you have the option of taking a job at a hospital that's unionized, getting involved in unions. Uh, professional organizations, like I just joined the California Association for Nurse Practitioners in our local chapter. Aside from having lovely dinners once a month for their meetings, uh, are involved in following like the legislation that's going through and advocating for certain legislation and uh, that sort of thing. Like they're expanding nurse practitioner, um, the, the scope of practice to independent practice um, starting next year with, you know, if you've been a nurse for a long a NP for a long enough time. Anyway, that's one thing, expanding the scope for nurse practitioners and nurse midwives to independently perform suction abortions. Um, and they're involved in that, you know, legislative part of it. And then maybe just directly become a manager and be a better manager than some of those who are out there doing it now. Yeah, go in and be the change. Be the change, Be the change the that you need in this place. Yeah, I can't really answer any of those questions because I am like, if you tell me like, oh, join a unit committee, I'm like, oh, like, it's just against my nature. So, But you found your own way. You started a YouTube channel and your whole, you know, Nurse Liz movement. So you're doing it in your way. That's that's one of many ways. Yeah, my um, that's how my original unit knew that I was going back to grad school because I joined a committee because I had to. Um, because I knew it would look good on my resume. And they were like, you're going to grad school when I joined. And I was like, I am trying. <laughs> I was asked a, a similar a similar question in an interview on a local TV show, but it was directed, it was directed toward the audience saying, hey, what would we as patients like other people to do in order to affect change in the medical system? And what my answer was, I really didn't want to give it, but it's the only thing I could come up with <laughs> um, was that, you know, as disenfranchised as many of us, including myself, um, are with the political system is to really be aware of who you're voting for and what you're voting for and why and the long term consequences. And it's so hard to know what to believe and I would really appreciate any recommendations of sites that break down um, you know, proposed bills or whatever in the medical field that really tell you what they feel, what the consequences are so that you don't end up just becoming a single issue voter and inadvertently, you know, maybe you vote for what you thought you wanted, but you wound up tearing up five other things that you love. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's hard because they like sneak weird stuff in there. You know yeah. what I mean? You're like voting on one thing. And then at the end of it, it's like, oh, we also put this in this bill. And you're like, what on earth? There are a lot of other organizations too that have their stakeholders in all the healthcare decisions that are made. The AARP is very involved. In I just joined. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some of us qualify for membership. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, Nurse Corky. Um, and um, I liked what, here, Rodriguez said. I I honestly, like yeah, I honestly don't know if I would become a nurse again in 50-50. I love nursing and I don't love healthcare. I feel like that sums up all of my feelings in like a nice little eloquent bubble. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rodriguez. Because like I do, I like the tasks. And if I could do it in a vacuum and I didn't have to deal with all of the, how much you can't do that you want to do, then I would love it. Like mm -hmm. I love, yes that if you just look at the person in front of you. So if I had the ability to do that, just look at who's in front of me, I would. Um, 
And I want to talk about this really quick. Um, this is someone who comments on some of my stuff. How can anyone recommend nursing with the current state the profession is in beyond me? It's just terrible. I wish people were honest about how terrible things are right now. It's a sinking ship and you'll realize three months into your first job. It's just sad. Um, and that's kind of why we're talking about this type of stuff. So like, because some jobs are really terrible and the whole point is not all jobs are like that. All of healthcare is kind of a, yes, like overall it's a hot mess, but some jobs still let you do the okay thing in front of you and treat you decently. And so we talk about it so that you can go and find a job that isn't going to treat you like crap because some of them do. Some of them you show up and it's eight to one on a med surge floor and no one for a long time, we didn't talk about it. We just kind of pretended that it was all fine. And so that's what we are trying to do is talk about the, what is fine and what's not and what we can kind of do with it, but don't just like hide our heads in a hole. Um, and a lot of us have left, like I've left Avery, like that is why we are having these conversations and such. So agreed. I see you. Agreed. It, I just definitely, regardless, people need to be cared for. So even with the unfortunate things that are happening, we still need nurses out there. So for the ones that do find those good positions, travel nursing is a good way to find them. Um, you know, we still we still need the help. Yep. Yep. So I'm not saying like it's for everyone. And yes, I think you should go in eyes wide open. Obviously, I would probably choose some I would choose something differently. But that doesn't mean everyone would. Um, and there are still decent jobs out there. So thoughts. So I see you. On that, and on that note, I'm going to head out, but I'll be down in the by. chat room. No problem. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye Thank guys. you for hanging out. <laughs> so friends, we have made it in the world of um, YouTube live stream. We have some kind of weird sex bot in the chat that I can't figure out how to get rid of. Um, <laughs> but I fe always hear of other people having like being like, oh my gosh, this bot is here. And I was always like, obviously I'm not cool enough to have this. It's kind of like if you've never been sent in lewd pictures and you know what I mean? You're like, when you, I've never, I've never gotten a pic like that. Um, we've made it now. Scott, you're muted. I'll un oh, oh. congratulations. I just put Thank them in you. Out. Maybe that'll help. Thank you. <laughs> we've made it. We've made it. <laughs> oh, I said, keep fighting the good fight. Yes. And you don't have to, that's the thing. Don't sacrifice yourself. I think for a long time, nursing has expected people to kind of like fall over on the sword and sacrifice themselves similarly to how we do teachers. Um, my whole goal here is to just be realistic about what it's really like and call out the crappy jobs. And I have very many, very critical videos of the healthcare system. <laughs> um, if you go check those out. So that's our goal here is just to have so people walk in eyes wide open. Do you guys get um, reprimanded or punished or even lose your jobs um, for just setting boundaries? Like as you bring up often not working overtime, for example, or? Yeah, you can. I mean, and if you get fired from a job because you won't pick up overtime, that's probably not a great job that you want to be at. You know, some places have mandatory overtime and at a job like that, like I would just say, no, like I'm going to go find a different job. And it's putting that boundary in place and kind of like, um, you know what I mean? Just like being like, I can't, we're not going to do this. You know what I mean? For a long time, we've dealt with a lot and it kind of has accumulated. And I feel like COVID's kind of pushed us over the edge where you were like, okay, yes, I'll pick up the one extra shift. Okay. I won't ever have a lunch break. Okay. I'll stay after for half an hour to finish charting. Okay. I, you know, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. This isn't safe, but I'll let it go. And that kind of just pushed it over the edge and some places will fire you, but I would say you have to be willing to get fired for situations. Um, that aren't healthy for you. Exactly. Like, and they won't like it. Exactly. I saw in one of the comments on the last video, we were talking about, oh, you know, ask, tell, like we were talking, Melody, about like, oh, tell your patient to just ask what the ratio are, what the ratios are. You know what I mean? Like one of the best things you can do as a patient is complain and say, you know, I asked my nurse what the ratio was and it didn't feel safe. Um, that, and then they were like, oh, if I did that, I would get fired. Then that's not somewhere you want to work. You know what I mean? If they're going to, if they're that embarrassed of their ratios, that if you speak up, um, then that's not helpful whatsoever um, at all. You know what I and mean? Yeah, this isn't my area. This is Adrian's area, but there mm -hmm. are at will and for cause employers. 
And so if they're an at-will employer, they can fire you for any reason at any time. Mm -hmm. If they're a for cause, they have to show cause to cause. fire you after your like one year probationary period or something like that. There are rules. And if it's unionized, you've got a contract and it's all spelled out. But yeah, those kinds of things management doesn't like necessarily. I had my, um, I don't think I've told this story yet. The, um, when the ER in California, we have a four to one patient ratio state mandated. In Amazing. Extreme, in, in extreme circumstances, patients worked up, we'll pull them out of the room, put them right outside the room, put another one in there. So I've got five patients, but one of them's already worked up. They're waiting to go upstairs, something like that. Um, unless you get a patient that's in ICU. And when they say the patient's got to go to the ICU, now you're down to one to one or one to two, depending on the patient um, acuity, how bad the patient is, just the same as up in the ICU, which is one to one or one to two. So I'd have four patients, one of them's going to the ICU, and I'd go to my charge nurse. I'd say, hey, my patient in room 12 is going to be going to the ICU. I need someone else to take my other three patients or someone to take this patient, and I'll keep my other three patients. And every single time, we don't, we don't have anyone to do that. We don't have staff to do that. If we do that, we'd have to use our break nurse, and then nobody's going to get their breaks. I'm like, well, you know, it's not my rule. And the patient is serious. And by the way, I need to get back in there. And I would go to my nurse manager in her office, sitting there in her suit and say, hey, I got the situation. Patient's going to the ICU. I'm asking for someone to take my other patients because of the state law. And the, and after doing that a few times, she finally looked at me. And she goes, you know, you're the only one that makes a big deal out of this. And yes. I said, you know, it doesn't make me wrong. No. So <laughs> you can fix it. If not, I'll document it and we'll do what we can because you know inevitably you do two hours three hours with an icu patient you turn around and your other three patients have been neglected for that three hours so um yeah they don't like it if you document it like that yeah, why is this med late short staffed unsafe oh, staffing yeah. someone will contact you and they'll be like you can't write that and you're like well that's the truth <laughs> you know it, it, it and, and sometimes the frustration is you're not knowing what the expectation is. So mm -hmm. I had a patient with cardiac arrest. Um, we got them back. There's all these things to do. The IVs, the drugs are going to the ICU. And one of the orders was to do um, um, hypothermia, therapeutic hypothermia. We put ice packs under the patient's arms and in their groin to try to lower their body temperature. <laughs> and, and that protects their brain tissue from damage from the not having your heartbeat for a while. Um, so I didn't do that. We were on our way up to the ICU. I'm like, well, there's this long list of things to do. I didn't do that one. They can do it when they get upstairs. Oh, no, no, no. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't we had a whole meeting about it? I'm like, well, you know, according to the standard, 12 to 24 hours is when you have to initiate that. But yet still, you know, why you had an order. You didn't take off this order. And this patient was critical. They would just had a cardiac in our like. So it's sometimes hard to know what they expect from you. And that's the frustration. Mm -hmm. But they can pick um. on it. I mean, it could be your tattoos. It could be your nose piercing. It could be your it could natural be your attitude, your beard, it's whatever, you know. or your attitude. Yeah, not a Often team player. My attitude. Not a team player. Yeah, that was my. Please, we don't like your attitude. It's just my personality. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a it's team a feature player. of it's my a personality for you. Yeah, yeah. We'll <laughs> one of my features. In, we'll get into that to another one, but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a team player. I'm a team player, but I won't do other people's work for them. That's how I got in trouble about being a team player, but that's a whole, that's another that's whole, a whole, oh, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into it. Um, I feel and like the, we, I'm going to say that the reason we're doing this is so that people won't go into nursing and realize, oh my God, I wish I had known. Yeah. And that people won't say, oh, I don't want to go into nursing when if they knew a little bit more, they'd say, oh, well, I didn't realize there was so many yeah. other places to practice. Maybe it is a good option for me. Exactly. That's why we're having conversations like this. Exactly. And I hope and that's what everybody's getting out of it. Hopefully. Let us know if that's what you're getting out of it. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. That's the goal. Or for um, just comedic entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Church of POS. <laughs> I like your username. Knowing what I know now, I wouldn't do it. There are other occupations you can make good money and be respected. Yes. Um, so, and that's the thing. Like, if you're going into it because you want a stable job that you're going to make good money at, like, and be well respected, that is a very valid reason to go into any profession. Um, and yeah. If that's the case, that's what I always tell people. I have always been like, if you just want money, this is not it. And that's okay to just want money. But like, why would you make money wiping butts when you can be a computer programmer and watch YouTube all day? Why? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Um, 
surgery studio said so true. I keep telling people we're on the Titanic. It's like a crazy addiction. We have the thing that of wanting to help people. I have found a way to do something I love and still utilize my training um, with the hospital like prep and everything. So I love that. And then Taylor Jones says, Mama Nurse and Nurse Scott have been seriously so encouraging throughout um, the lives you have. Mommy, or nursing is scary to go into, and I appreciate the positivity, and I could not agree more. This is why I am I feel very lucky to have found people who are willing to come on like this because I am not – I can be a little doom and gloom, um, and I felt like we needed – I wanted to talk about these things, but I needed, like, counterbalances to my doom, so – but I think I'm we kind eternally of grateful for them. Have some insight into your doom and gloom is because you're looking big picture, mm -hmm. and that is depressing. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not your uh, counterpart to say no. Nursing's wonderful. Everything's great. Mm -hmm. Nurse Liz is completely wrong. I'm here to say that there are good parts of it, but yeah, there are definitely problems. And it's up to you, kind of how how much you want to get caught up in the bad stuff and how much you want to sacrifice one, you know, make the sacrifices that you do. And that's, I think, the benefit of the panel is we can get everybody's input. Like, and so I'm just thrilled that it's going how it is. And I appreciate all of you for joining it um, because it does so much more than just my opinion. And it's it's doing the thing. And I love it. And thank you. And now there's 160 people here listening to us making your making nurse tube happen. So thanks, friends. Um, if you are liking it, just comp do compressions on the like button. And that tells the YouTube gods to send it to their other friends. Um, mm -hmm. An I've odd number several, of times. Um, I've seen several questions uh, from students asking basically why they're not respected by nurses and how to navigate those relationships. If you guys want to address that. We can probably do a separate um, chat all on being a nursing student mm -hmm. right now with nurses because that will probably spiral out into a whole lot. Um, Mostly it's just overwhelm. You're adding one more thing to an overwhelmed human and it's just a lot, um, a lot. But I appreciate you finding it and I think we we can have a whole conversation on it. Um, Mike says, I'm an LPN and honestly don't think I would. Mike is on team Liz. Um, knowing what I do now, probably go into real estate. Bold, bold. The thing I don't real like about real estate. It goes up and down. That's, you know, the thing is the there hours. are always these sick people to take care of. There may not always be a lot of houses to sell. And you're going to get those weird people but who are going to be like. Choice. That could be something that, that, that Mike is comfortable with. Mike, I'm worried that you're going to get these people who are like, hi, I'd like a five bedroom house with three bathrooms. And then it's going to be like a house hunters thing. And you're like, great. What do you do for a living? And they're like, I um, design um, water bottle cushions. And my husband trains earthworms. And they're like, <laughs> you're like, you have no money. <laughs> That type of situation. So just think about that, Mike, as we critique your life choices with there zero. There's no perfect job. There's no perfect job. Uh huh. Uh huh. All come with their own challenges. Uh, Michelle B. Hare said, "Hello. You may have already mentioned it. I'm late joining. What other professions in healthcare would you recommend?" Um, I wouldn't work in healthcare again. I think mine would be a, a departure from the whole thing, um, unless I could find something that somehow helped people that didn't deal with insurance. So maybe palliative care is where I would land. But my issue is like the, I only see the big picture, which is bad. And the whole thing makes me nervous. So I would probably, I mean, I love the nursing job, just like um, we were saying, like, I love the job, just like Roderick was saying, I just, mm, it's the healthcare part. And you aren't supposed to do nursing if you're not in healthcare, it's frowned upon legally. Yeah, but you, you don't have do to that care about it. You don't have to care about it. You know I who's know. always happy? The radiology techs. They are. That may not be a bad job. They go around they taking are. pictures all day. I've never met a depressed radiology tech in any hospital I've ever worked at. That's very and true. There are those other ancillary services you don't think about. There are phlebotomists. They don't make a lot. Respiratory therapists make a decent amount of money. Mm -hmm. uh, Respiratory therapy. Um, yeah, uh, occupational therapy, physical therapy. They have higher educational requirements nowadays but um yeah we're speech language pathologists they're usually pretty jolly when they come in and you're they're I assessing your video follow. i actually have a whole video on why you should work in a hospital and i go through well, there you go it's tedious to watch but <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
working for a hospital is stable. There are benefits, and there are tons of different jobs from engineering to, you know, if you mm -hmm. like to like replace doors and fix tables, there's a job there. You want to fix the biomedical um, equipment that we use. You want to be the tech person that Liz calls at 1 a.m. being like, my computer is broken yet again. And they come yeah. and they're like, it's not plugged in, Liz. IT it's help us. You want to cook some food. You want to clean rooms. You want to do laundry. You want to supervise the people that do any of that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Talk and Michelle, we also, <laughs> Michelle, we also talked about alternative therapies, the movement therapy, music therapy, art, the creative, stuff like that. And and Nurse Liz, don't you have a, a list of um, on on various professions that we're going to be adding to? Is that correct? Is that one of your playlists? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So I'm doing I do like an interview series where I'm interviewing different people like, oh, do you want to be a PA? Do you want to be a NICU nurse? What else do we have on there? Acute care NP. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So those are highlighting some of them. I don't know if I would recommend any of them yet, though. Like. <laughs> Oh, palliative care. I did like palliative care. That mm -hmm. interview was really, um, it has nothing to do with the people who I interviewed. It's just, that's the first job that I was like this. Um, I'm that's, we're going to interview Melody about, uh, music therapy. And then Scott, if you want to ever do a chat about emergency room nursing, absolutely, <laughs> we'll get all the, all the tea. And if any of you work in a specialty, um, I'm just slowly going through those and adding them so that people do kind of get a focused look at kind of like this style of different jobs. Um, and I would also like to point out um, that uh, Miranda has kindly pointed out that I do have the ability to be positive when we're talking about my excitement that I finally got infiltrated <laughs> with weird bots. <laughs> it's probably not how you should say that sentence, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> no, you um, made it in the YouTube world. Perfect. Uh, I Ibuzina says, I've been an RN since 1992. I'm a diploma grad, working cardiac step down in ER for 15 years. After 9-11, went full-time into admission, administrative work, have worked URCM, urgent care, case management, and now... Utilization review. Case management? And maybe case management. Probably. <laughs> oh, yeah. UR would never be urgent care. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what work. <laughs> you are. Slow down, Liz. Slow down. <laughs> and now audit claims would not recommend, um, would not recommend what profession oh, entirely there's, or, um, there's the bot. Oh my goodness. Review. Someone handle the bot. I'll get I don't know. I don't I'll know how other you. people handle the bot. Sometimes I think they go to subscriber only mode, but, hmm. Um, Lizette said, no, I wouldn't go back if I could go back. Unfortunately, I've lost my face in our healthcare system. I am blessed enough to be able to drop to part-time to keep my full-time sanity. See good boundaries. Lizette's on my team. We bailed together. <laughs> yes, it's back. Um, apparently it heard that I probably shouldn't have complimented it. You probably shouldn't <laughs> compliment bots like that. And they'll be like, wait, what? <laughs> Everyone else. I got it. I got it. I want to, you know, in, in my spirit of saving everybody. Thank you. Like, Thank you. Be God, like, block. Thank you. <laughs> Clayton says, I have a good friend who's a CRNA and probably would love to do an interview. Oh, perfect. That would be wonderful. Um, chill of 10 says the only thing I, I hope that means you have like a chill factor of 10. I need that in my life. My chill factor is one. The only thing I love about nursing is the autonomy. Nursing destroys fun, loving human beings. If you don't have good boundaries, like I don't have good boundaries, then yes. Yes. That may be Thanks, chill off. That may be chill oh. often. Oh. They like to chill off. That makes sense. Chill yeah. often. Yeah. That's, you know, that's it's good. a job where you make decisions on your own all the time. Um, there are other jobs where you don't make that many decisions. You do what you're told. And mm -hmm. there are other jobs where you make a lot more decisions on your own. Yep. Some are very regulated. I would say most of my nursing jobs did not have a ton of autonomy. It was very set out. Like, if this happens, do this. If this happens, you had a ton of standing orders. And it was kind of like, if X, then Y. If one, then two. So you just kind of had to know what you were going to do and then go you into You were basically it. a body with a license in that case. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But in the ER, it's different. We have a lot of autonomy, a lot, especially that's why I liked working triage is I got to decide who went first, second, and third to the back. And if I needed to do any first aid there, and a lot of decision making there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Annette says, I'm at a standstill. I hate the way FMP is using as a Band-Aid for our broken system. Um, Scott would recommend you look at the individual humans you are focusing on, and I would recommend an existential crisis. So 
take your pick. <laughs> you pick. Yeah, Melody might be in between. She might be like, maybe you could just go and get some music therapy and deal with it slightly better than that. <laughs> Sing. <laughs> Well, there is no band-aid for this. If it were a simple problem to fix, it's like we talk about homelessness in San Francisco. If it were mm -hmm. a simple problem, a simple problem, simple solution, we would have done it by now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, don't be discouraged that we haven't fixed healthcare yet because it's yeah. a very complex problem with a lot of stakeholders and competing interests. And, you know, yeah, that's why I decided sure. not to worry about it. Bad news, friends. Sam Sam says, I are nurse. She's an IR nurse and radiology checks are not happy. So no. that's out. So that's unfortunate. Nurse Corky agrees with me that maybe speech therapists are happy. Maybe. Um, Raf M says, if I had to do it over again, I would choose medical physicist. Wow. Um, wow. I only recently heard of that term. I don't even know what that is. I um, think they deal with the, like the radiation treatments for cancer patients. They have to understand wow. the physics of the radiation. Correct me if I'm wrong, Roth. I mean, that's an interesting job title. That sounds like a lot. Um, I'm glad that's for someone. <laughs> um, Nurse Corky said, if I had to do it again, I would go into PT or OT. So PT is physical therapy and OT is occupational therapy. I could see that being very rewarding. Um, but don't you think they have their... their you know, oh, I'm sure they have there. always greener. It's like, well, you're only approved for six sessions, but I'm not done with you. I still have things I want to do with you in physical oh. therapy. They've only approved you for, you know. Oh, I couldn't do any of that because I would have that exact issue. Like I send my patients a lot of the times they'll go for one physical therapy session and that is all they can literally afford. Because again, deductibles are crazy high. And I'm like, you have to just ask them for like a list of all of these things that like maybe you can try in the future. And I feel so bad because a lot of physical therapy, they try so hard. But what are you going to do in one hour? You know what I mean? Like, uh, um, so Jax Runner says, speaking for occupational therapy practitioners, because I'm a um, COTA and RN, I will tell you they are definitely way underpaid. So um, you may have joy, but you will be poor. So that's what we're learning. So we're still looking for that um, unicorn job. Um, maybe ophthalmology, like nursing student happiness, radiology, ophthalmology. Ophtho anesthesiology and dermatology, dermatology. Maybe it is the people that are doing all the injections that are truly the happy ones. Uh, well, these are medical specialties. So you have to go to med school and dermatology is a very competitive specialty. So easier said than done. But how about op optometrists? Yes, optometry. Um, Lynn Experience said, love nursing, but the politics of it all is mind boggling. I plan on marrying rich and volunteering as a nurse. See, yes. That's what I'd like to do is do like volunteer nurse practitioner work. Um, we're not there yet. <laughs> Corinne says, I am a teacher applying to nursing school for fall 2023. I'm 28 and have worked in school since 2013. I think the inequalities and injustices in education and in healthcare are similar. I agree. I think we hold the same weird, like, uh, val like you assign it becomes a moral thing for both teaching and nursing. Like, oh, you don't want to work as a teacher anymore? You're abandoning the children. If you don't want to work as a teacher, like a nurse anymore, um, you know, then you're abandoning the patients. How dare you? Dental hygienist is my next thought. Teeth, mouths. I love I've seen going too many to mouths. You know how I like writing papers and that makes me weird. I also like going to the dentist and I always tell my dentist, I think if I did it over again, I might do that because it's gadget. They're always coming up with new gadgets you know, to use, like, I don't know. I've always found it fascinating. Maybe I hadn't thought of that till just now, but yeah, that might be an mm. alternate. Mm. Alter. Dentists do have a really good schedule though. Dentists, usually their offices are open like four days a week and they're always on vacation. But Lizette, I agree. Mouths, mouths. Yeah, but we do butts <laughs> and other kind of gross stuff. So I teeth, I don't do, I don't like teeth. I don't like teeth. Um, Daniela Jensen said, do you think getting your master's is worth it? I heard being an IVF nurse is not bad um, for your mental health. See, I think being an IVF nurse would be so sad. Like when it doesn't work. Um, that would make me so sad. Um, it depends on what. Fertilization, I think so. Yeah. Fertility. That would be too sad for me. Um, but I don't know. I think, I mean, it depends on what you want to get your master's in. Obviously, I have mine. Um, Scott's getting his. Um, Melody, yours is a master's, right? Correct. So 
I think it just depends on what you have it in. And like, I feel like so many people feel like they have to go back for their master's, but they don't really know what they want it in because nursing school is going to feed you this thing of like, oh, go back to grad school because they want your money while you're already in school. But I think you really have to figure it out first and figure out like, this is exactly what I want to go into. Um, otherwise, you're going to be like... You have to pick a major. You don't just get yeah. a master's in nursing. It's either yeah. master's in nursing and nursing education or in um, nurse midwifery or family nurse pra uh, nurse practitioner. One, you, you have to pick mm -hmm. something more administration and leadership. So yeah. You still have to yeah. pick a, a major. And you're going to want to really like it. What right? do you want to do, Danielle? That's the question. What do you want to do with your life? Yeah. What Where do you, you want work? to how do? do, you do? Spend, how do you want to spend your time? Because it's one thing to want the degree. It's another thing to want to go through the process to get the degree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are you willing to do that? Mama nurse. Vanessa, Vanessa said, my dentist chose dentistry because her whole family was in healthcare and she knew it wasn't for her. <laughs> I don't want to smell your breath. Same. I'm like, I don't. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Um, and Rosalind Trimble said, I went from being an overworked labor and delivery nurse to a relaxed lactation consultant. I think like being a lactation consultant would be awesome. And all the training I needed was an additional certification, money well spent, and for a new occupation. That's a good one. I think that would be awesome, being a lactation consultant. Um, so there, we found one. All right, everyone, we found one lactation consultant. Oh, and pick nurse. Raph M said, I really love pick nurses. I will watch them do their work. A pick is that central line that goes in your arm right here and then goes and drives right next to your heart and we push all sorts there? of medicine through it peripherally inserted central catheter yes. I, was gonna... <laughs> I thought about that too i thought that'd be interesting to go around and do ivs and pick it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, see if, that's raf see if he told us what the medical physicist was any place when you get a medical phys oh yes he did um raf m they deal with a lot of areas physicists can help fix machines that deal with nuclear materials which are the area i'm most interested in usually work by yourself and travel to different places there you go perfect for some people that's my nightmare <laughs> <laughs> Um, Mindy Meek says there's no perfect job. That's very true. You have to decide what you're willing to deal with and build up your boundaries coping. I'm a nurse educator and have almost left the profession many times. Um, yeah. And then we just, you know, there's lots of things to do in it. Um, I think the moral of this whole story is there is no wrong answer. You just, if you could go in with your eyes wide open, that would be the best because as we learned in our last live, um, pretty much a huge number, I think 33% of the profession leaves within two years. That's my great number. So, and I think a lot of that is because expectation versus reality was not necessarily lining up. Um, and that's, I think what we're trying to do here is is change expectation to be more mm -hmm. in line with reality. Yep. So you go in with your eyes wide open. And, not sugarcoat and, and it. Just not, and don't not go in because you didn't realize that there are some aspects of it that are better than you you have heard on the grapevine by all the you know old battle axe nurses that are there in clinicals going oh honey you need to run now while you still can get your get your business degree yep yep well that's their experience take it with a grain of salt listen to what we say talk to your instructors talk to each other shadow shadow a nurse Yes. And education does need to do a better job aligning expectations to reality. I think part of the problem there is a lot of educators haven't necessarily worked in it for a while. Uh, and then you run into a big problem of, you know, you just aren't in it. So you don't know. Um, and that is difficult. Uh, Annette said, are you maintaining your FNP for now? Um, I'm not like for sure I'm never going back to it, um, but I'm going to maintain it for now because it's a real pain in the butt to get. So I have all of my hours I need to recertify next year. So I have like six years where I'm good. Um, I fine. saw a comment from Danielle who said that she was very creative and looking for a job with work-life balance. I definitely would look into the creative therapies, the music, the movement, the dance, the drama therapy there's tons of them mm -hmm. for sure for sure education has a lot of ex areas to be like creative in um all of those things lots and lots of options um okay any final thoughts my child hair has run up so we always know that means we have to leave um i think i'll just hand it over to you final thoughts Jeez, I don't know. I think I, what I just said is 
I, I know that Nurse Liz is going to put out um, something on the bulletin board uh, to help us prepare for Saturday's stream on, on chronic illness. Uh, please, if you have any questions specifically for me from a patient's point of view, or you're just kind of wondering, like, what do patients think when X, Y, and Z or whatever, I, I will do my best to respond in the broadcast on Saturday. We appreciate you. Thanks. This was a good point. You have to really love what you're doing and be determined, but young people have so many options they need to research before moving forward. Yes. Just look around. Sorry. Well, there's also a weird work ethic with young people these days compared to how it used to be. I, I, I'm not quite sure. I think they just have boundaries. <laughs> I think they're like, no, I'm not taking that crap. Um, but that can be a discussion for a different day because I know a lot of people <laughs> think that younger people are like super lazy. I think they just have really good boundaries and they're like, no, I'm not going to like work is to sustain my life and not the other way around. Like, you know, whereas in previous generations, like that is not something that like my parents, it was much more like, you know, this, your work is your life. And then Protestant work ethic. Exactly. And then they look at like us and, you know, they, my dad always like laughs because I'll like, I don't always get stuff done. And he's like, so are you going to finish it? I was like, no, I'm done for the week. Like if I, they did not give me enough time to do it. So I'm done. And he's like, who raised you? <laughs> like, cause that's just not their mentality at all. You know what I mean? I'm like for my business. Yes. But it's, if it's not my business. I'm not dying on that hill. Like, and I like it. <laughs> But we don't have to agree. That's the whole point. Um, any final words? I think Scott? my takeaway is choose for yourself because you're going to hear, mm -hmm. like I said, the nurses who are disgruntled a lot have been, a lot of nurses have been through a lot with COVID. I can't speak to that, but listen to them. But choose for yourself. If, if, if you're thinking about nursing and there's a little spark inside you that says, I want to do this, listen to that. Mm -hmm. Realize all, you know, recognize reality, but, but, but honor that because it can be a calling. It can be just a job, but it can be a calling to, to serve your fellow man, you know, and spend your life that way. Um, and if you're already a nurse, it's okay to change your mind. Like, like Liz says, and try something else either within nursing or without, you know, choose for yourself and don't yep. get bogged down by, um, by all the noise mm -hmm. and you know, focus on category one things, things that are your problem, things that you can change the whole world going to hell not a lot you can do about it so you can be miserable about it or you can focus on the new baby you just delivered or the little old man that, that squeezes your hand or the family that thanks you and 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 you know for sure anchor yourself to that for sure yeah i think my takeaway would be yeah that you can change your mind um, it's okay if you got yourself into something that now you realize is not for you and then set really good boundaries because I think there are a lot of great careers within it. Um, if you can handle it and it's okay if you can't, like it's not a moral failing. It's just that this job didn't work for you. And remember that every other profession would think you're insane for feeling like a failure for not cutting it. Like normal people are not like, I couldn't be a barista. <laughs> like it's not normal. Okay. We're just, we move on and you are wonderful. Um, just the way you are, whatever way it turns out, no wrong answer. You're going to, and you're going to learn something no matter what, like, like I think everyone who said they wouldn't even do it, they probably learned a lot from it and are who they are today because of it. Um, and then they can leave. Um, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, like I said, we'll see you Saturday for a chat about chronic stuff. Watch out for the post where we can ask questions on that. Um, if you like this, then just like it an odd number of times. Um, if you want to get in on the discussion where we're discussing the car crash with the nurse and like all the stuff around that and other rambly videos, you can become a member down below like these lovely people. Um, oh, not that one, this one, <laughs> these lovely people. And yeah, comment, do all the YouTube -y things that make the YouTube gods happy. And please remember that you, my friends are more than enough. You are not alone and you can do hard things. Bye friends. And thanks to our panel member for being here today. You're the bomb. You make this an excellent experience. Now I can't find my end screen. Here it is. <laughs> No one is shocked. No one is shocked.